Okay, uh, before explaining the while loop, I'd like to introduce you user input. User input is a feature that allows your script to interact with the user. And with interaction, I mean when the user executes the script. So like when we call the script here, the script will ask the user to enter some input. Let's say they will enter a number and the script will get this number and will process it. We'll do some operations depending on what we have written inside the script and then it will return some result back to the user. And the user input feature is implemented through the input function. As simple as this input and here you can write some message that will be shown to the user. Let's say what planet are you from? Just like that. Save the script and then go to your command line and execute. So this is script 6. And the program is asking us to enter some input. Let's say Earth. That's it. Here nothing happened because we didn't do any other thing here uh, rather than just asking the user to input some value. So let's do something with that value. But first of all, uh, we need to store that value inside a variable. That would be a good practice. Let's say planet equals to the value that the user will input. So the planet will get the value that the user will enter here. Then we can do something with that value. Let's say we want to print that value. Planet. That's it. So let's execute again. Mars this time. So the program prints out Mars. Okay, printing is good, but let's go a bit more advanced than that. So I'll go to my script 2, and what I have here is a function. Let me delete this. So we had the function here, which we wrote before in the course, and this function gets uh, the currency rate as input and the amount of euros which you want to convert to dollars. So the function then calculates the dollars, given the euros and the rate, and it returns the dollars. What we will do now is uh, get a value for the rate and a value for euros from the user. So we will get the, those values here, and then we will execute this, the function given those values. For that we need two inputs here. Let's say r as a variable, input enter rate and once more enter euros and this would be e and then these values would go here so r for the rate and e for the euros so we execute the script python reads the function definition then it asks the user to enter the rate the user enters the rate then the script goes on Python asks the user to enter the euros, the user enters the euros, and then those value are passed to the currency converter function. Now I expect to get an error here, but I still want to execute it so that you see what error you'll get, and that's how you understand things better. So let's execute script number 2, yeah. Uh, this is not the error I was talking about. This is because I forgot to save the script. So let me execute it again. And so we are now asked to enter the rate. Let's say 100. Yeah. And euros. Let's say 3 euros. Why not? And here is the error I was talking about. And Python is basically saying that it, it cannot multiply strings. Why is that? Well, that is because when the user enters the numbers here, as we did, the input function reads those values as strings. So it doesn't immediately read them as numbers, as we would uh, probably expect. But there is a solution to that. Once we get those uh, strings here in the R and the E variable, we could convert them to a float. We would want to apply the float function to each of these variables. So before these values would be passed to the currency converter function for uh, execution, the values of these variables would first be converted to a float data type. And lastly, we would want to print out the output that this function generates. And that's it. Click save. 
and then go to the command line and script 2 enter the rate let's say 4 euros 100 this time and so we get 400 so that was how you can make your script interactive so that the script can uh, get the user input process it and then returns an output in the next lecture i'll be incorporating the user input function while teaching you the while loop so i'll see you in the next lecture